Robert Plank Show, Episode 112. Build an online presence and connect with your ideal customer with AJ Prasad. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Robert Plank Show. This is the online podcast where we talk about making money and today's guest is AJ Prasad. Now AJ is formerly a marketer for a few Fortune 10 companies and he now owns GMR Web Team, GMR Transcription and his brand new business Repugent. AJ has focused his career on helping SMBs maximize the revenue and reach through the internet. So AJ, I'm Robert. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, Robert, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome. I mean, I, I'm happy too. So what I want to know is what is it that you do and how are you different from everyone else out there? Well, so uh, what we do is, is essentially we help uh, uh, small and medium-sized businesses maximize their sales from the Internet. And a lot of the business is now coming from the Internet. So, so that's what we do. And, and we are different from... Uh, from or your typical digital marketing agency is uh, number one we are uh, we are a full service uh, agency so we have all the pieces in one place so we are not like a one trick pony uh, and we are very strategy focused and and then uh, we judge ourselves based on what kind of return we are bringing for our clients so for for our client it doesn't take them to we don't do all these uh, uh, mumbo jumbo about ranking and where you are. We just look at it, say what kind of money you are making from the internet, or what how many how many leads you are getting, and then we see if we can improve it. We come up with a plan. We tell them what the budget will be, and uh, and you know if they stuck with us, that means they are happy. They are getting a positive return on investment, and we don't lose many clients. So which t- tells me that we must be doing something right. That that tells you that you're providing good service, right? Yes. And, and that's cool and I like that because I don't know like I don't work with a, a ton of small businesses. I work with a few and what I always hear a lot is that uh, for, ex- uh, like, for example, I see that you you guys work with like dentists and urgent care uh, doctors and things like that and mm-hmm. what, I, what I hear from some of these doctors like the, the dentists especially and like the chiropractors especially is that uh, they just get like these robocalls all day long just from these kind of like you said like some of the, the other one trick pony kind of agencies yeah. and, and all they do is they say well do you want to have a, a better Yelp review and I'm thinking okay like a Yelp review is nice but what about the rest of it, right? What about a, a website, social media, stuff like that, right? Yes, and, and that is that is where we always tell them that one thing is not going to, to do anything for you. So, you know, in these days uh, now to get a business from the internet, you know, you have, you know, of course you have to be found. So when someone is looking for you, you need to be found. Uh, and then you need to have a really a stellar, um, you know, reputation online. Uh, where the Yelp review comes in, definitely, and and the other thing, and then once you you have this, then then of course you have to be able to convert. So that's that's what it takes for someone to contact you, and then after that your service comes in, uh, and and really most of the small businesses, uh, I always say that if majority of your business coming from new customers, then you need to look inside and see what you're doing wrong because majority of the customers we should be getting really from referrals, especially for small businesses. Uh, as you do a good job, so everything needs to be a piece of it. You know, you cannot just say, uh, I'll get you this, I'll get you that. Un- unless there's, a, you know, you look at all the pieces of business together, it will not work. and. You know, because I my experience is with larger companies where we always knew that the operations is as important as marketing, which and finance is as important as operations and marketing. So I, I we become more of a consultant to our client, not just uh, bring them uh, customers. Uh, in fact, today I'm meeting with one of my clients, where uh, you know it looks like we are not getting the positive return on investment uh, in four months. So we are. So that's the discussion I'm going. We are going to have is go over the numbers, really look at all the metrics to see if it is making sense. Like one of the things that's not making sense to me is their the value of sales. So until we understand, you know, uh, until the company understands, you know, what's the value of sales? How do you know if your marketing is effective or not? Right. Right. So so we get to that level, and you. 
it's you cannot just take one piece and and do it you cannot say seo do it don't do ad uh, paid advertising don't do retargeted Every, everything has a place and the reason people say you don't do it because they don't know generally speaking so what what we do is we say okay given a business what are the best thing uh, you know what what should be the right strategy for marketing and we tell them you know there are of course there are businesses where we say you know what social media is not really critical for you uh, which is very rare nowadays obviously uh, there are businesses we say don't even worry about uh, seo because you know it's so comparative the all the relevant keywords it will take forever so let's let's figure out how to uh, start doing paid paid advertising and and get a positive return on investment for you so again you know marketing has to be customized and it every business is very unique that's what we always say and and our your campaign needs to be consistent with the business and i, and I like that and, and it seems like from what you just said like there's there's like a couple of like, like levels to it right so you could say that like the, the 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 worst most basic level would be like like you said the like the one trick ponies that all they want to do is just show like well look you can rank high for this keyword and so it Correct. seems like the the next the next step up is some kind of an agency that they, they do everything, right? And it seems like yeah. the next level above that is that, okay, they do everything, but they they look at what's already there and they look at uh, like what's worth doing and look at the competition and they say, even though we could do these 10, 20 things, maybe we'll just do five. And then it sounds like the next level even above that, which it sounds like where you're at, is you do all that, but also once the ball is rolling, then you'll get kind of course correct. You don't just set up the website and then say, have fun, walk away. You actually exactly. go, like you said, uh, the leads aren't coming in or there's not enough repeat customers, so now you go and, and fix things over time. Correct, correct. And, and you know, the, I've always said that web is no different than brick and mortar. It's not like you set up a store and you put a signage and everything and you are done. I mean, you you have to keep on improving. You have to tweak your uh, the product that you are you are selling. You you need to be changing different, trying different kind of marketing campaigns to maximize it. So this so this is no different. You know, we are uh, for example, we are a Google Premier Partner. All it means is we have jumped through many hoops, uh, and Google recognizes us as experts in uh, in Google AdWords, and. Uh, you know, for all our clients, we manage over a million dollars right now for our clients' uh, budget. And we are tracking it, we are checking it three, four times a day to see what's the trend, what is working. It's not, these are not the kind of thing that you set it up and you are done. Uh, so, so, you, so you have to keep on looking, you have to keep on improving, and that's all marketing. And when I was in uh, corporate America before for big companies, it's not like we had a campaign, say, a TV advertising, and, and it was successful. We, so we said, okay, it's done. Now we just have to keep on doing the same advertising, right? Because Right. I, I mean, if it worked, why not repeat it or even try to make it better, right? Exactly. And, but at some point, any advertising, you'll see that there is a, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a life cycle. And after some point, you start to see it starts to become less and less effective. And then you have to go in and change it. Uh, you know, even the large corporations like Coca-Cola and all, you will see that that their theme keeps on changing, right? Uh, and because that, you know, that that's what uh, marketing is all about. You have to keep on looking at the results, and if you see that now it is declining, you have you have to make some changes uh, to keep that momentum going. Well, yeah, I mean, imagine if every year for the Super Bowl you'd see the exact same commercials. That's exactly. no fun. That's that's exactly my point. Well, cool. So, could you give me like a, a good example of some business, some business that you came across where they maybe had a lot of missed opportunities, and then you went in and you worked your magic and you 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 made their business super awesome? Yes, you know, since since you talked about urgent care, and by the way, we have many many clients. We have some, you know, uh, there are a few very large companies also are our clients. When I'm saying large, I'm saying a couple of hundred million dollars. Um, you know, the largest one probably would be a you know couple of billion dollars, but we have a lot of these uh, small businesses that are struggling. So urgent care is a very good example. We uh, this urgent care center came to us for marketing. This is uh, about a year and a half back, and they were basically they just were very honest and they said, listen, our sales have been dropping. 
and uh, now we are running in loss and if in six months we cannot turn it around we have to close it because you know their lease was running out so they said we are not going to renew the lease uh, if we uh, if we can't become uh, uh, profitable so we did analysis and we could see that there were a lot of searches that people are searching and that is true i mean urgent care is is one thing that you cannot even afford not to do digital marketing because that's the first thing people do is go on the internet when they have you know when they have a cut or anything they're looking for urgent care so we saw that there were a lot of searches for for them so of course you know their website was outdated they were not getting found there so but then other thing that that popped up was that their uh, uh, their yelp uh, rating was 1.2 and they had seven reviews you know just seven and uh, you know, and the last one was one year old. But if you just went on their Yelp, you saw 1.2 rating. So my first question was, is this the correct number? Because if this is correct, I don't think any I can do anything. You know, I can get people to come to your website with my activities, but after that, they will not come to you because uh, you know they will. Who wants to go to a place where everyone is saying it's horrible? Right. And and of course the the owner got really upset at me almost. She, she was like, "What do you mean? You know, we have been there for 25 years. We have all these loyal customers." So I just said, "Yeah, I mean, someone who does not know you, how would they know?" So they so what we did is, of course, we redid the website. That was a, the simple thing. We we did because this is local marketing. It becomes really easy. So we did some. Uh, uh, we started with some uh, did both SEO and and some paid advertising. So quickly start getting people on their website, and then we instituted a program, ongoing program to improve uh, their reputation. Because what happens that reviews people don't automatically write reviews, just just because they had a great experience. The people who have bad experience are more likely to uh, to write a review because they are pissed off. So so we created a process. It was a manual process, which later on I I uh, really automated, which became Refugent. So we created a process for them where uh, we printed a card and and the uh, front desk was uh, to ask everyone when they were leaving, you know, how was your experience? And if they thought, if they said very good or, you know, in their uh, judgment, they were happy, then give them a card, request them to write a review. And literally three, fast forward three months, you know, they were, their review was 3.0. They were already in black. Uh, you know the whole operation, uh, and and now one year down the road, they are getting like they, their number of patient count has doubled. So half of the patient is now coming from internet, which was not even there before. They are uh, they have hundred plus reviews. Their average uh, is over four point zero because our process is such that if you are unhappy, then we just ask you what happened, and then we'll say we'll contact you, and someone contacts that. Uh, if you are uh, if you are unhappy, if you are happy, then we we ask you to write a review. As simple as that. And so so now uh, one year later, they are like super profitable. Obviously, they they you know they they went and uh, they renewed the lease for another uh, ten years, and it's like a, a huge success story. Now this was a change. So they I, we had they had uh, two other. Uh, you know, urgent care centers. So they had like similar problem, not as bad as the this one. So of course now we are doing all three of them, and and it's a very profitable operation. So this this gives you a very good example, like how literally in in three months, a business which was uh, contemplating closing turned out uh, turned around and became a very successful uh, operation. You know, they are like uh, right now that is probably one of the most uh, profitable urgent uh, care center in the city. Awesome. And, and that's, that's cool that in just a few months, it seems like before they were, they were probably working really hard and, and missing out on a lot of things. And now like just because you were able to plug in just, just a handful of strategies, now it turned the whole thing around. Yeah. And, and the interesting thing is that by putting this, uh, uh, for example, putting this reputation uh, uh, development process, they also started to get feedback on from the customer who are not happy, right? So, uh, so if the customer is not happy, uh, they they tell you what happened, and that's what uh, we have when we automated the system, the refugee, and that's what it does. 
Uh, so now that that when when people are not happy, you find out. So you also improve your operation. And so I, so they learn a lot of thing from from our system that they also made changes in their operations, which made them even stronger. And I like that. So so it's not just a matter of following up with the happy customers to balance out the bad reviews with some good ones, but it's also if you keep getting all the reviews saying that like the the place isn't uh, the, the place isn't clean enough or Correct. that yeah. the, the you know the secretary is mean or something or they in don't fact, follow up enough they can correct fact, that the funny thing is that there was that problem so they had to fire one of the front desk person nice <laughs> because, because she was mean and uh, you know that everyone complained about so they just essentially went and uh, and you know changed that and that made a big difference in their happiness and that's cool because that, that's one of those things where, I mean, just a few years ago before all this stuff, they might not have even known. That. I mean, it, it might have been for the past 20 years this was their problem, right? Correct, correct, correct. You that, know, they were, the, the people were thrilled with their doctors. The front desk was the problem. And such an easy thing to fix, right? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Cool. And I really like stuff like that. Like, for example, um, I really like that. You know, like when there's a house for sale near me, uh, they almost all have a, a website now, right? Mm -hmm. Like on, on the actual sign, and it's usually like, you know, 123mainstreet.com. It's like what's printed right on the sign, like super easy to get to. And I really like that. Um, I, and it seems like the, like the dentists seem to be the most, the most uh, savvy, I guess, with this kind of thing. But I really like, like when I go to my dentist, uh, well, I think when I was a kid, what was cool about the dentist was they would have you like write yourself a postcard. Mm -hmm. for six months from now so that and you totally forget that you sent that but six months later a thing comes in the postcard and you recognize your own handwriting and I'm sure that was just part of Correct. the process to get customers back and I like that now that there's all this uh, this technology like the dentist I go to now uh, what I do like I have my appointment again from six months ago I forget that there's an appointment coming up and then I think that they um, they te like a, a system like sends me a text message Exactly and then, right. And then emails me, and even the email itself says either I can click a link to reschedule, I can click a link to say uh, I know that this is I, I agree with the appointment time. Do not contact me again, or yes. I can say I agree, but also email me again like a day before. I love yeah. that, and I wish more businesses would do that. Yes, exactly right. And you see, these are like the you know you for retention, you want to do that, and then of course for every dentist. You have to have stellar review online. I mean, otherwise, again, if you, if I see 1.2, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, rating on, you know, either on not just on Yelp, but suppose you know the rate MD or or you know you have Vitals and all those you know medical related site, and if I go there and someone is saying, and I went there and I came out with a bloody mouth, guess what? <laughs> you are not going. Right. So, so it is so important to have. Uh, it do a uh, stellar review now to get new customers because you know your typical process now is when people find you they go and find about you before they contact you oh yeah and and that's so true about i mean any kind of de dentist or doctor kind of thing like the reviews are so huge because like if there's a if there's a Walmart or a Target or a Taco Bell nearby that has two stars well fine I'm, I'll still go there Perfect. but if if there's a doctor who's like three stars, I'm like, I'm not, I don't trust that. Every local business, so that's what I say, the chains can, is a different story, just like you said, but every local business needs to have a very stellar online reputation. There's no way around it. And for medical profession, it's even critical. I mean, I, I know some hospitals which has horrible um, ratings, so I don't even know how people go there. Just... They, they have no choice. It's what's nearby, I guess, right? Yeah. And, and I really like what kind of what uh, what that kind of like leads us to because that's always the fear, right? Every, everyone's fear is that if they have like a, either a mom and pop business or something with, you know, only 10 employees and then the big retail chain comes to town, like maybe they own like a, a deli or like an Italian restaurant and then, mm -hmm. you know, Olive Garden comes to town or, or a Subway comes to town and everyone's always worried that, well, the big – the big franchise is going to push me out. But it sounds exactly. like, so with this online stuff, with the social media, with the reviews, the big it, chains don't really do that. Exactly. This is how everyone can get ahead. You are 100% there. I mean, that's, that's, that is, that's why I always say that digital marketing is so critical for small businesses. Uh, and they, you can really, uh, 
you know, have your customer loyalty um, and and just keep on making improvement and, and not lose new uh, your existing customers and keep on adding new customers. And it is totally irrelevant if you have a competition. I always tell people, uh, my clients that, listen, the competition, yes, you know, uh, worry about it, but but I, you know, first thing you have to worry about is, is internally. If you're doing everything right, you can, you know, hold any other, any comp you can go against any competition. I don't care how big they are. Because again, it's the local and people, even, even individuals, I would tell you, and I work for a restaurant chain, right? One of my job was I was a VP of strategy for a big uh, restaurant chain, it's a billion dollar corporation. And I know that, uh, that the customers have an affinity for a local, they, if they had their own preference, they will go to that mom and pop restaurant instead of uh, this chain. I mean, that's, that's the first inclination. I mean, uh, and uh, so again, you can build your customer relationship. And when the new, when you go to a new place, then obviously review is, is how they will go. So if I don't have a way to check a review of a restaurant, then I will end up going to a chain because I know what to expect. Right. So, so the chain is like the, the default decision. Like the, Correct. if you Correct. can't decide, you just go to the chain. Yeah, low risk decision. Well, well, cool. So, I mean, I don't want to keep you too long. And as we're winding this down, could you tell us as far as uh, all the the businesses that you've helped and worked on, what's the number one mistake you see them all making? Uh, you know, the I think that the number one mistake that they all uh, all make is they are just way too focused on, on outside instead of uh, looking inside. Uh, every business needs to understand why they are in business, why they are different from their competition. And uh, small businesses, generally speaking, don't do that, which is, uh, which is the, you know, which is the biggest mistake. I've always said that if you're a small business, you need to know why. Uh, you know, if someone has been in business for 25 years like this urgent care, it's easy, right? So you can talk about, you know, how we have been serving the, your, this uh, locality for 25 years, but for if you are an accountant, you are whatever you are, why? And so, so, and and one of the things that will happen is if you look internally, then you will start to focus on who your ideal customer is. Uh, small businesses have a tendency to take any customer. I made that mistake, frankly, when I started my own business, is to go and take we, you know, I'll take any customer. Then later on, I was spending way too much time on the wrong customers. So you have to, uh, every small business has to figure out who their ideal customer is. And once you have that figured out who your ideal customer is, then you start to focus on getting those customers because that is the only way you will, you will grow, you will keep customers because, uh, and so you need, need to know who, who uh, that is. And very few business I run into have that. So and these are the two biggest mistakes that, you know, they, they, tend to focus too much on, oh, so-and-so is doing this, so-and-so is doing that, or oh, they have this, this happened. And I always say that what you do has going to be the biggest impact on your business rather than what happens, you know, outside. And the other thing about that is, like, it, it seems like that, I mean, any anyone who's, like, in, in the business, like if someone, like, owns a restaurant or owns an urgent care, a lot of times it seems like, they're too close to it, and they they need someone like you to look at their business from the outside, from a, 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 a regular person's perspective, to figure out their weaknesses and figure out their strengths that they should be yeah. doing more of. I, you see, just asking questions. I mean, I can tell you that uh, many uh, business owners, when I start asking them questions, it just makes them think. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know. So, uh, so that's that's the thing, you know. More, the small businesses uh, really are so busy surviving that really do, they don't have, so they are always working on the business. They are not uh, in the business, not on the business. And you need to take some time off so that you can, you can work on the business and see what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong and make adjustments. And, and it's, it is very hard, but getting, you know, outside company like us, it's very automatic for us. Right, you know, because we start asking, okay, you know, where do you, how do you differentiate yourself? You know, what, what is the problem? Just like we did with urgent care, uh, they had no, it had never occurred to them that no one will, even if someone referred, 
because I told them that, listen, when people even refer and they say go to that urgent care, they are going to check you up on the internet and they see your review and they are not going to come. So it had never even occurred to them that not having a plan f to get ongoing reviews is hurting their business. So, so that, that, that's what I'm saying, you know, you have to be looking at what is working, what's not working. And like I said, if you had this internal focus, number one, uh, to, to see what, you know, where you can make improvement. And I always say you, we will, you will seldom hit home runs. All you have to do is hit regular singles and doubles and, and you'll see that you are winning. And then, of course, every business should know who is their ideal customer. That will really help them focus their marketing, uh, you know, better. So, man, so two really good pieces of advice. Focus inside and then differentiate and get your ideal customer. So, can uh, I really like everything you had to say and I want to send people your way. Could you let everyone know, AJ, uh, where can people find out more about you and, and what it is you do and maybe even hire you? Sure. So, so you know, there, there, there are two uh, websites that they should check. You know, my digital marketing agency website is gmrwebteam.com. It's just like it sounds. GMR is Gloria uh, Mary Rachel and this web as in website and team as in like football team <laughs> that you have dot com. And that will give you an idea of our approach even to digital marketing. And the other one that we have created like a software as a service for generating ongoing reviews, which also helps you see what your customers, how they are, uh, if you know, if there are any flaws, it's called Repugen, it's R-E-P-U, P as in Paul, U-G-E-N, uh, G as in Gloria, uh, N as in Nancy, so Repugen.com. And there you will, you will really see uh, what you can just use that. It, it, you know, this is the software that essentially automates the whole manual process that I had created for our businesses to generate, uh, uh, you know, uh, more, more reviews and, and get the feedback. And the reason I created software, frankly, is the, the execution level was so spotty. You know, some of my clients did an excellent job of manually doing it. Some of them, um, you know, not so excellent, not very good. So this software just takes the fright out of asking people how successful, you know, how happy you are and or getting any feedback. So the system does everything and now you can just contact customers who are unhappy to address their issues. So, so these two sites, I will say that they should go and check me out. Awesome. I mean, yeah, like, like the, the GMR web team looks like a great website, great service, and Repugen looks like a great uh, little software as a service. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that you came on the show, AJ, and I'm really happy that uh, you shared the things you did. I was really impressed, learned a lot, so thanks for coming on. Thank you very much, uh, Robert, and it was great being here.